Hey guys, I'm Rob Bass, and this is Japan the Otaku Show. I'm doing an interview with uh, Jason Miner, and uh, if you don't know who he is, he's got this thing called uh, Fables for Japan. Uh, you really need to check it out. And Jason, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, why don't you just give everyone just a little bit about what these books are about? Okay, they're a series of three anthology um, charity ebooks. Um, they are a collection of short stories, comic book stories, fiction, poems, um, all connected by uh, the theme of Japanese folklore. So they're original tales inspired by Japanese folklore. And um, there's, like I said, there's three of them. E each book is um, over 130 pages. Um, and all the profits, uh, all the proceeds go to um, charity to help, uh, help those affected by the earthquake in Japan. Okay, well, let's just start right there. Just talk about uh, how did you uh, initially when you started doing these books? Was it always in the intent of helping this? Did you come up with this before, or how did this come about? Uh, actually, the initial idea was started by Matthew Funk, who's one of the writers on the book. Um, and Matt had the idea of doing a, a anthology um, called Fairy Tales for Japan with with a smaller group of people. Um, and it was it was inspired by the events of the of the earthquake. Um, with, so his idea was to donate to the Red Cross. And I, I volunteered. I saw his uh, he he posted on Twitter about it, and I, I volunteered to do a story. <clears throat> and um, for various reasons, that didn't work out. So I thought it was a really good idea. I didn't want to necessarily see it go. So I decided to pick it up and uh, and. Uh, Took over the recruiting of it and how to publish it. One of the one of the sticking points was how do we actually publish this thing and get it out there in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons one of, that's the reason it's a uh, ebook because it is the cheapest and easiest way to get it out there, which allowed us to then give pretty much all the profits towards um, towards Japan. And um, it went from there. We started. Uh, recruiting people and it kind of blew up I, I you know originally we were going to do one book with a handful of stories and here we are three books into it and um, over 80 87 people involved and almost 500 pages of material see that's beautiful that's what I really love about the books is that like it's so diverse in what you have in there it's it's definitely more than just a comic book or just a uh, fiction book or whatever it's just a real hodgepodge of stuff and I think that works better and I mean the people you have on the book are just actually stellar right. uh, just the artwork alone I've seen a lot of people working to do charities for Japan who want to do comics per se or do whatever and what ends up happening is that you know it's a little lackluster in artwork but you guys definitely don't have that how how did you how was the event of trying to recruit that, that talent together well that was a bit of an interesting thing for me I I started out uh, working in comics. I worked for about 10 years uh, for Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, a whole bunch that no longer exist. <laughs> and <too>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of them started off with people that um, I knew. Like, for example, Stuart Moore was my editor on Books of Magic, and hmm. uh, now he's a writer. So, you know, he was very gracious and uh, very willing to help out. Um, so a lot of it came started that way. Um, then I started um, plundering <laughs> Facebook and Twitter and uh, just looking up any artist who I really liked and any artist that I came across that I liked or any writer that I liked and sending them emails, seeing if they want to be involved. And very cool. Did you like? Did they like? Did you also like go to Deviant Art and stuff like that? Or yeah, uh, actually, for most. Uh, most of book, or well, a lot of book three is uh, artists from DeviantArt. Um, I, did, I kind of stumbled on that resource towards the end of the project. Um, but, yeah, a lot of them came from there. Very, very awesome. I mean, also, I want to talk about the whole digital publishing. How It's kind of like such a funny thing because everyone talks about going digital and everyone thinks comicsology, graphically, and and stuff like that. No one really just thinks straight up PDF files and how to get it. Everyone sees that as this kind of like the uh, 
not the way to go. And I, I think it actually worked out great. It was so easy to get the books. And I didn't need to have to worry about having some kind of player or some sure. kind of program to help me read the book. I could just get it. I paid for the books, and then I got it. I downloaded it from wherever the link it was. And, and I just felt it was the easiest process of digital download for books I've ever seen in my life. Well, and that's I, good. How did that, like, I mean, what... I, it's such a funny thing because you always ask people about the digital process and they don't really seem to know like how did you have to like how did you did you have to get somebody else involved to help you with the digital process or how did that work well no um, as, as you say it's it's just a PDF file it's about as simple and direct as you can make it um, and uh, I, I basically got the idea to do it as a PDF for a couple reasons um, one Doing it on, on a Kindle or Nook has great limitations when it comes to doing graphics. Uh, they're getting better with that, but um, for the most part, it's it's either black and white or or the the images can't be very crisp, or, and uh, it just didn't lend itself to the kind of graphic work we want to do. Is that uh, a problem with the RGB from the CMYK kind of a? It doesn't really. Sometimes there's certain. Uh, like if you have a phone app or whatever, it doesn't register certain colors, so you end up having a different looking artwork actually sometimes. Yeah, that, that can be a problem. Uh, more like with the Kindle, um, they really don't support graphics hardly at all. I guess with the new Kindle uh, Fire, Fire yeah. they, they have started doing that. But at the time we started doing this book, Kindle Fire wasn't around. And, um, you know, most of the artwork you see on Kindle was, you know, black and white and very basic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, perhaps now it's, it's a way to go, but when we started, it wasn't there. And um, the, but the other the other thing about just doing it as a simple app, actually, I got the idea from uh, Scotty Young, who's a comic book artist. Uh, on his website, he he decided to do a, he put out a little story that he did simply as a PDF, just to see how it went. And I downloaded it; I thought it was a great idea, so I yeah. stole it. Um, so well, at least you're giving credit now. It's not stealing when you just steal. <laughs> you give credit. It's never stealing. Yeah. Um, but you know, so it, it was for for us. It was the quickest and easiest way to get it out there to get it to people as quickly as we could. Obviously, the books took a long time to put together. Mm -hmm. So you know, the the quicker we could get it out, the the more relevant relevant it is. We're a year into it, and a lot of people have forgotten about Japan. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's another issue that people just think yeah. it. We always have, we always uh, we're we're I hate to say it, we're like a country of like what's the next cause. Yeah, yeah, we like we forget about the fact that there's still tons of stuff happening over there. There's lots of my friends that are, who are Japanese live in Japan and live in the northern part. They still have to make sure they have umbrellas all the time just in case if acid rain happens. And this right. is stuff that's a daily, everyday thing. Yeah, it's it's not gone away, and and unfortunately, I think a lot of people assume things go away when the media stops. But beyond that, it's a lot. There was a. I think there's a perception of Japan as being an extremely wealthy nation, which they are, um, and and that they they had it under control. But I think, and to some degree, they did in a lot of ways better than a lot of uh, other places that didn't have those resources. Right. But you know, at the same token, the, the very few places in the world had ever been hit with something that catastrophic, and uh, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. There's there's no way to make that all go away in a week, in a year. I mean, no, really, it just for the fact of the earth shifted like point something inches and oh, yeah. weather changed and so much happened, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, that, and then you couple that with the tsunami and then the nuclear reactor meltdown. That's that's a triple threat right there. Yeah, it's, it's just a sick thing. I mean, right now, if uh, uh, people who have NHK World or whatever, the specials they always put out about forward after 311 and all the stuff about the rebuilding process, they're still battle there's just still like oil tankers and stuff on top of buildings there are still right. people who don't know where their family is this right. is a very serious and everyday thing this it doesn't just go away and helping out any way you can to this point is very good actually on our website we had the red cross uh had their thing going so mm -hmm. i had a button for people to donate and then we checked on it and red cross stopped doing it it just all right it's not there no more so yeah, we, we had so actually yeah. you, you sorry if I'm talking you but you put we just ended up just going with Japan Society because right. they always have it going. So go on. Right. Yeah, we were going to go with the Red Cross initially too, uh, and then it came time to donate, and we found out the same thing. Um, and there's there's various reasons why the Red Cross chose to pull out, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we decided to go with the International Medical Corps, uh, 
for, for a number of reasons, uh, but one of the things I liked was the fact that they were working a lot with the evacuees from Fukushima. Mm. And, um, you know, that, that the long-term effects of the radiation are, I think, what's going to plague them the most. So I, I liked the fact that they were doing a lot with those people and, uh, and also just helping people, you know, rebuild their lives. It's more, more of a long-term situation than the quick fix of just getting food in and out. Right. This is what people realize that those people that are affected were more farmers, fishermen. There were, these are towns of people for rice fields, and they live off of what they make, and now they can't even be on their land anymore. Right. And so they've lost a whole life. You talk about generations of people who were cattle farmers or just the, whatever it be, they are no longer allowed to do that. You cannot be there. Right. So what do they do? How do they uproot their lives where all they know is that? It's a very different process. Yeah. But to... True. To Sorry. Get, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> to uh, get back on this, the books, I mean, now you said you originally were just trying to do one and you end up doing three. Do you plan to do more than just three, or how long do you want to see this going for? No, nah, we're, we're capping it at three. Uh, it is a tremendous amount of work, and um, and it's it's been very difficult to, to see it through. So, you know, once we, once we settled on a path and we settled on doing the three, that was the goal, and we got there. Um, so... As far as future for this, we are looking to uh, to do a print version. Um, yeah, I was going to ask about that because the first of the lush artwork is just so gorgeous; it would look yeah. perfect in print. Yeah, like you say, a lot of these. Not to disparage anybody else, but I, I, I know what you mean. A lot of these charity things do tend to not have the most robust work, and I think we've been very lucky with the people who have donated. And uh, it's it, I. That speaking as humbly as I can, they are beautiful books, and they really deserve to see print. And um, so, we're looking into options to do that. Um, I mean, that right now is something I I I have the PDFs, and it is it, it, it it's it's good. I actually, you know, it's funny. You can actually uh, the Nook. I have the Nook tablet, and I may actually read. It, I can actually read it on there just fine in the PDF uh-huh. form, and that's uh-huh. great. But having the actual books, it would just look gorgeous. Because first, like, you talk about two hundred pages of book, and there's really like. First off, for even for a download, getting almost two hundred pages worth of material, that's not possible for for what three ninety five each. It's never heard of, so it's yeah. actually cheap, affordable, worth getting, and the stories are so good. The artists take that detailed time. You look at some of the artwork, and they understand the Japanese culture. Like they really took that time to really capture it properly, especially like the mythological artwork. And there's so much there that really uh, I don't want to keep like blowing smoke, but I'm telling you, it's really like that good and. Okay, um, take the smoke. <laughs> take it all you can, right? And um, <laughs> it, it, to see it in print form, I mean, like the, I, I would buy a hardbound of that in a heartbeat. I, I hope others feel that way too, because that's what we're we're aiming for. We're uh, probably there's a couple of options we're looking at, but uh, we'll probably be starting um, a Kickstarter program, um, and hopefully by the end of this month or um, or soon after, um, to try to raise money for a a collected hardcover print edition uh, with some bonus material in it, some new stories and things like that. So it, w- it won't be just the PDFs um, in the book. It'll be actually additional informa- or additional stories and artwork. See, that, that's right. That's perfect. You, when you're going to do a, a, give a reason for the print version, you have to always give a little more incentive than just make yeah. it in print form. That's because as a, people will buy, they want the most of their money. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, I, think we, I think we can do that. Um, Hopefully. Now, my question is: uh, Do you uh, do you plan to maybe even translate in this for actually for Japan? Um, actually, that hasn't come up. Um, it's not a bad idea, but I I don't know of anybody who really could do that. Um, so, <laughs> I guess that we could look into that. Because that definitely, you know, for the first time, you're doing something for them, and for them to not to be able even to see that the work is there would be uh, would be a shame. I mean, yeah. it would be a really big shame. Yeah. Because I don't think uh, a lot of Japanese, when it comes to the comic form, even though it's not 100 percent comic, but it's well keep it within that realm, that they never really see us understanding their culture 1,000 percent. They get a lot of us like it, but when they when they find out about people like. Americans who like Japanese stuff, it's always just kind of straight up manga, anime, right. you know, and they don't really see that we like all of it. Yeah, there's a lot more there than I think most Americans see with the, the manga that comes overseas. Um, yeah, it, it gets really split off because, you know, the younger the audience, they want 
that intense ADD stuff. They don't really look for stuff like Vagabond and, and the more like uh, Lady Snowblood and books that are just much more like how in the style of artwork you guys are doing. Right. You know, they, they all just kind of go straight with the, like, the hyper super anime foaming from the mouth stuff that tends right. to, to get them like I'm leveled right here. So right. I mean it, it, to get it and to have such t- people dedicated uh, I mean what has been the um, from the people I mean you pull these people together did you have to pick and choose the artists with the writers or did they work with each other how did that it, it was a little more organic for the most part um, you know we would start off with getting writers and and you know pretty much all of this was done over, uh, over email since the people involved in the book are literally from all over the world yeah. um, so you know, it started off we, we would start collecting the stories we start editing them I would send the stories out to to artists who have uh, have you know, who were you know wanting to contribute, and they would pick the story they like. And you know, for the most part, that's the way it worked. There were very few cases where it's like, "Here, can you do this one?" You know, and, and so mostly people just kind of chose what what it was that moved them, and and that's what they did artwork for, and uh, it worked out pretty good. Well, okay, so. Got the three books, and with the possibility we can publish, would be something I think is I'm ecstatic. I mean, like right now, I'm kind of shaking because I'm really excited about it. I mean, I just found out about you guys recently, and I, I, the fact that I found out so late, I, I actually said to my wife, like, "Why didn't I hear about this sooner? Like, why did it take this long for me to find this? Like, it just like drove me crazy." And I've actually been making all my guys work at my website and everywhere around. Like, I've been sending emails for the links right to your store to get the books. Like go and buy this. I would send links out to everybody I knew. Is you have to get this book, right. not just to support the Japan Fund, because that makes you feel good, but also it's that good. I appreciate that. We yeah. are we are definitely an independent group by every sense of the word. So we don't have uh, we don't have a lot of resources to get um, as much publicity as I'd like, and it's it's not been an e- easy thing to get a lot of people talking about it. They they I think they tend to say. Oh, it's a charity book for Japan in that past, and you know charity books aren't usually that exciting. So it kind of gets panned a little bit. They're you know happy someone's doing it, but it doesn't really get looked at. You see, that's that's the problem is that people are like, oh, it's a charity. No, no, no. Look at the work first before you just judge it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, part of I guess part of that's probably my my doing. I, I you know early on I, I promoted it mostly through the charity aspect, and and really it it is. A shortcoming to the work to to say it's just a charity book. It's because the people who have done the work are, have done a phenomenal job, and you know the book stands on its own. Definitely. I mean, even if there was nothing ever happening, that if three eleven never happened, this book would still be that phenomenal. So that, that's one of the things we're hoping with the Kickstarter and the uh, print, and and um, we're looking into making special special Kindle versions that can get on Amazon. We're hoping to reach a broader group of people that haven't been able to hear about the book. Now, uh, with, the, with the website, uh, just tell everyone, what's your website? Do you guys have a Twitter? We do. Uh, I couldn't find it. I was trying to find it on Twitter. But So can you tell everybody the website, the Twitter, the, if there's any uh-huh. other like a Facebook group or whatever? Yep. They, there is a Twitter, Facebook, and website. Uh, all of them are Fables for Japan with the number four instead of the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the website's uh, www.fables4, letter four, or number four, um, japan.com. Twitter is the same at Fables for Japan, and Facebook is the same. Right. There, cool. there's, there, uh, there's links on the, the webpage to, uh, to both of them, so the people can find it that way too. Very cool. Actually, I put it. I think I actually already put it up on our site because I've been the minute I found about it, I spent like about 20 minutes making my guys do whatever they had to do to help get you more promoted. And that's the reason why I contacted you as fast. I mean, I contacted you the day I read the books and I I bought it. Everything was all that same time. I just wanted to not waste time and get you on here and I appreciate just it. get it out there to everybody because it helps. And the more people know, the better off. I mean, is there any people you want to thank or? that we can just kind of like throw out a little shout since you got the time right now? Uh, yeah, there, well, I mean, obviously everyone who contributed, um, you know, pr- predominantly 90% of them uh, are freelance artists and writers and, you know, to take the time to actually do that much work for free hmm. is not a small small thing at all to donate. That's pretty huge, actually. I spent 
you know, 10 years doing freelance. I know you don't have that time, kind of time to give, so it's a big thing. Uh, so to all of them, I, I'm very grateful. Um, very grateful to everyone who's bought the book. That's, uh, that's the whole reason that we're doing it. So if no one bought the book, it would be fun, but it, it wouldn't be, it would be meaningless. So that's, that's a big deal. And um, specifically, I, I thank Matt Funk for starting the whole thing. Uh, I think there was several people who were very, very big at contributing to the, uh, to the, uh, to the whole project. Uh, Gareth Slayholm was one. Um, Patricia McNeely was one. Um, uh, Mary Hall uh, helped me with the editing on, on all three books and uh, uh, contributed some work herself. And there's a, there's a long list of people. That's very cool. I mean, I have to say just thank you for making this book. And I got to tell people, you really have to pick up these books. I mean, it's it's the simplest process. You give a couple bucks and you get millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of... Well, I mean, if you had to actually get these artists together, this book would not exist nowadays. The fact that you got these guys to work for free and do the work ahead is, uh, without a doubt, amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm very amazed that, we, that, it, that it all worked out the way it did. I'm very grateful for that. All right, I just want to thank you for coming on. I didn't want to make this too long. I don't want to waste your time. And um, is there anything closing you would want to say that we can just uh, end on that? Um, just please buy the books. That uh, <laughs> yeah. they're they're beautiful. I think you'll enjoy them. And as a fringe benefit, it helps a few people. So. Yeah. Right, cool. And I just want to say thank you. And guys, really go out and uh, get these books. I'm just you know, if you don't know where to look, you don't want to go to his website. You're on my website. Just there's a link already. Just click the link and get the books. Uh, Jason, I want to thank you so much. No problem. I thank you. <laughs>